distinguished uh, dignitaries, excellencies, dear friends of Pakistan and of the European Union, ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased to be here today and I would like to congratulate the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for supporting this important conference on Pakistan's challenges to political stability and economic revival. It is a very topical and a very interesting subject and as we could see from the um, very rich discussions on the last panels, uh, it is also very pertinent. Trade is an integral part of any economic revival plan. Trade proves to be an engine for growth. The European Union is one of the most outward-oriented economies in the world by virtue of its trade instruments. The EU is also the world's largest single market area. Free trade among its members was one of the EU's founding principles. Those are the um, very famous um, four freedoms, free circulation of goods, services, people and capital in the single market. And hence, the EU is also committed to opening up uh, to the world trade arena. The EU's share in world trade in goods and services was 15% in 2021. In value terms, it was worth 5.33 trillion euros, of which 3.65 trillion was only in goods, which grew by 26% over the past 10 years. Growth in trade in services grew at even a higher rate at 50% in the last 10 years. This shows the scope for liberalization and trade. The EU is the first and foremost export destination for Pakistani products. The EU is helping Pakistan to boost its export to the exports to the European single market by awarding Pakistan its autonomous trade concession regime, uh, that is the generalized system of preferences plus, uh, known as GSP plus, from which Pakistan has benefited since January 2014. In order to have access to this favorable regime, Pakistan has to reflect progress in implementing 27 international core conventions on human rights, governance, labor rights, and environmental standards. And the EU has the obligation to monitor the progress in implementing these uh, conventions. So the question is, what has GSP Plus brought to Pakistan? GSP Plus provides a huge benefit to Pakistan's exports by offering quota-free, duty-free access to the EU's single market for 66% of tariff lines. Thanks to GSP Plus, Pakistan's export to the, it exports to the EU expanded to 9.4 4 billion euros in 2022 from 4.5 billion in 2013. And this represents a 108% increase over these years. Similarly, the EU's exports to Pakistan registered an increase of 40.45% during this period from 3.8 billion to 5.5 4 billion euros. The bilateral trade reflected a deficit of 4, Euro, 4 billion euros in 2022 in Pakistan's favor. In year 2021 alone, the estimated monetized value of the trade concessions, which means tariffs not due thanks to the GSP Plus regime, offered to Pakistan was at least 500 million euros. But GSP Plus is not just about trade percentages or data. It is foremost about trade with values. These values have been divided in those four categories, human rights, labor rights, environment, and governance, which I already mentioned. A wide range of legal reforms of the human rights and labor market has taken place in Pakistan over the past 10 years since the award of the GSP Plus regime. 
Every new uh, legislation needs an implementation mechanism. This is where the provinces come in. The provincial autonomy needs to be directed towards the implementation of laws pertaining to GSP plus conventions. For instance, police need to be trained to avoid custodial torture under the Convention Against Torture. Similarly, as regards trade unionization, industries in each prov province need to follow a mechanism for tripartite dialogue as well as collective bargaining. Industries and governments also need to avoid environmental degradation and unplanned urbanization, which adversely affects biodiversity. All these interesting elements form part of the GSP plus trade regime. Further, Pakistan needs to empower women to attain sustainable development. In traditional societies, women are often confronted with a multitude, a multitude of challenges to claim their rightful place in society and at the workplace. Pakistan has made some progress. Of the eight estimated 2.2 million people employed in garment factories, around 28% are women. This is a distinguishing feature of the ready-made garments labor force in Pakistan which has allowed women to enter the labor force. Although the numbers for the regional RMG industry are higher, for instance, 65% in Bangladesh or 76% in Sri Lanka, I am confident that Pakistan will register further progress on this road. Please allow me to emphasize that creating a more inclusive work environment is only part of the solution. To promote women's economic empowerment even further, we need to create the conditions to help entrepreneurial women start their own businesses and become self-reliant. And GSP Plus is a useful tool for this. Let me share one interesting example. The EU delegation in the recent past launched a small initiative called She Goes Digital. We identified 10 women working from home in remote areas of KPK province through the Women Chambers of Commerce. They were engaged in tailoring and embroidery. The project trained them to launch online shops using social media platforms. And with basic training of not more than a few weeks, they are now connected with the world and run their own online shops. As you can see from the above examples, the EU-Pakistan trade relations are very interesting and innovative. Now you may be wondering why the European Union grants these generous trade privileges. It is not because we promote some European agenda but because we believe in sustainable and inclusive development based on the universal values enshrined in these 27 core conventions, which are underlying the GSP+. Growth without respecting workers' rights, without civil society space, and without efforts to promote gender equality is not sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, now a few words about the most important part of GSP+, that is, monitoring its implementation. The EU is obliged under the GSP+, regulation, to submit a report to the European Parliament and the Council on the functioning of the GSP+, scheme, once every two years. The monitoring mission that visited Pakistan in June 2022 concluded with further recommendations pertaining to the implementation of these 27 GSP plus conventions. The information on these recommendations is expected to be made public anytime soon and will form part of the next report. To give you a flavor as to what monitoring leads to, have a look at the following recommendations. Reduce laws awarding capital punishment. 
adopt a law against enforced disappearances. Adopt a law against uh, torture as per the Convention Against Torture. Establish single electoral rolls. Encourage labor unionization in all provinces. Increase the number of labor inspectors and strengthen the inspection system. Publish the result of labor surveys. Update on efforts to establish an account of the population of the snow leopard. And update on action to reduce air pollution, in particular in, re in relation to brick kilns, factories and vehicles. We are currently working on the fourth and final report of the ongoing GSP Plus regime. This present GSP Plus regime, which was to conclude uh, on, the 20, on the 31st of December this year, is expected to be extended for another four years before this year ends. So it should continue for four years. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to meet these challenges, we must all work closely together in implementing all the GSP Plus commitments, the government of Pakistan needs the strong support of provincial and local governments, as well as of civil society, to monitor the human rights situation, to suggest solutions, and to help with implementation. The delegation of the European Union is available to assist Pakistan and to provide guidance wherever needed. Thank you very much for your kind attention.